we are here today uh, to, uh, well, first of all, I'm going to talk to you about the production of Mars, um, but we're also going to uh, reveal some of the fun facts um, about the production of the game that not many, that nobody knows but the team, something that we couldn't share because NDA, but now we can without spoiling much of the game. But before we do, um, my first question to both of you, how does it feel sitting here at launch day of the Vest Mars looking back of years of production of the game and of all of the hard work? Extremely excited. Um, I'm just like so, so, so proud of everybody that was involved. And uh, just uh, to kind of see what we've done, you know, over the past two and a half years, um, it really shows that there's just so many talented people here at Kirkin and with the people that we work with, the actors, uh, our partners, it is just so exciting to see something come to life. And uh, finally, you know, to be able to share it with the world, I think that's, uh, that's where we are right now, yeah. I could only add a little bit to that because I couldn't agree more. Um, I think I'm shaking the table from excitement. On, I'm not sure maybe you're shaking it. <laughs> I'm, I'm shaking it. <laughs> <You, yeah. laughs> no, no. So, <laughs> bursting, happiness bursting from all over in my whole being. Yeah, so in a way, the journey kind of comes to the end, but yet at the same time, not really because the game comes out right and it kind of starts living on its own, but th this time mm. in hands of the community, actually, of all of the people that get to play it. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm shaking here too. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to join you on this one between the three of us. There's, there's a lot of shaking going on. Um, <laughs> What is your source of inspiration, uh, things you do to recharge and keep uh, energy levels high when working and especially when producing the game because it can be quite challenging and quite energy draining? Ooh, that's, I would say, a really interesting question and uh, it's a pretty tough one. I personally, what kept me going was the inspiration of a lot of people around me so i would say i'm stealing inspiration from other inspired people and in that case uh, in this office that doesn't lack so with every step all, all you see is motivation you see dedication to just make it bigger better stronger um for me personally it's this when you see everyone um giving their all in in, in the, for this one project for this one common goal what could motivate you more we're just all driving together what do you think yeah I, th I think that's uh, that's 100% true I couldn't can agree any more than that um, I, th I think you know what really recharges me is uh, it's just sleep really uh, <laughs> you know you got you got to sleep to recharge uh, but you know <laughs> when you're at back at the office here I can tell you like everybody that's involved is just so excited and everybody's just really really happy with what they're doing um, they're really talented and you know if you see people work on something and um, you know really accomplish what they wanted to achieve uh, it just really motivates um, you know myself and that motivates the team again because I guess you know we're kind of um, we kind of share the positivity right with with the team um, if, if we're positive the team's positive uh, if we're negative the team's negative and I th don't think we've ever been very negative uh, so I think that, that really shows uh, back into the game um, well at least that's what we hope right so um, with the two of you working uh, as producers on the team this is the question that wasn't on the list but I've always wanted to ask um, have you ever had to practice good cop bad cop <laughs> I was expecting this question <laughs> I don't know why I'm preparing for it all morning. You know me way too well, Vic. <laughs> Guilty. I don't know if we've actually practiced the good cop or bad cop, but maybe we have had to adopt such roles from time to time. Yeah, I, I think we might have done it naturally some, somewhat. I don't think we've ever practiced in front of a mirror, you know, but I, I do think we've, uh, we might have pulled that trick uh, out of our, uh, our hat um, some time ago. Yeah, but yeah. But then, I maybe that's not how it goes, but I'm going to moderate this question. If you have to answer who is the bad cop and who is the good one, what would you say? Ooh. Just to... Uh, I, 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 think, I think you're the bad cop. <laughs> <laughs> I would accept it. Or no, I, I think, yeah, I think, I think you can be tougher than me. I think. I'm not sure. Tough one. Hmm. Maybe I can be tough too. No, that's, that's tough. I don't know. I was, uh, yeah, I was thinking that you might be the bad cop. <laughs> okay. I don't know why. <laughs> just more respect uh, 
I don't know. I don't know. Maybe maybe I'm the bad cop. Maybe we should just make a poll and ask. I, I guess we both could be. So that that's the, that's the, that's a good thing, right? We can both kind well, of switch Well, I have roles. a Sophia in chat saying that she agrees that Vic is the bad cop. I guess the the thing is that we have to ask the team members. So Sophia goes with Vic as the bad cop. So oh, uh, just wear the hat. Where's the we just we'll hat? just quickly make Julia <laughs> print a quick survey up there and then hand it out in the office and just like who is the bad cop <laughs> between those two? Pick one. I have to go, guys. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think uh, uh, we're only joking, of course, because as we said earlier, it's always teamwork. It's always we have one goal. The end is the great production of the game in the end. What is the most memorable moment of the Diverse Mars production for you? The moment that you're like, whoa, I'll never forget it. Oh, I, I have so many of those moments, I think, during production. Uh, I mean, it's two and a half years, so there's a lot that happens, you know, throughout development. Uh, but I think if I really have to choose one, it'd probably be the motion capture shoot yes. uh, with the actors. Uh, we you know, flew to London. Um, I was there just for a couple of days. I know some of my colleagues, they were there for like two weeks, uh, but I was there for like, I think three or four days. And just to meet the actors and everybody involved on you know, Molyneux's end and Centroid's end, uh, doing the, the motion capture and performance capture, uh, and you know, the directors, everybody that's involved, you know, you have runners, you have audio engineers, you know, recording the audio and you just see those actors performing what you've kind of, yeah, designed for so long and, um, you know, thought of narratively as well and, and written down in the script and you've read the script so many times and then you see it actually happen in front of you. I think that is very surreal um, and incredibly awesome. I don't think there's a feeling um, that really yeah, compares to that really. So it's really cool. I think that's the most memorable moment for me. But what about you, Vic? Oof. Um, since you already mentioned the, the performance capture process, I would go for the um, in-house cinematics uh, and the whole process behind it and uh, Rainer with his camera going around the office and filming. Uh, um, for me, that was a pretty memorable moment just because I helped him um, duct tape the notes that we use for pivot points around the ground so I was um, upstairs in the attic duct taping notes to the ground to help Rainer to <laughs> film um, I think it was a dramatic scene with Kathy I'm not gonna spoil anything more um, but yeah definitely that was a fun and a pretty memorable moment and of course all the the, the conversations between Jill and Jeremy I just can't uh, miss that I'm sorry I'm a big fan of you guys so <laughs> it wasn't, it wasn't right. oh, I love it. I, I love that it's always like both of your answers are kind of connected with the whole like cinematic process of like, you know, actually things come into life and seeing mm. how things are fit. And it's, I, I love how it's like in the same kind of area of, of it. All right. Can we go in? Uh, I'm, I'm not sure if you have the printed versions of the facts uh, with you. Amazing. We've, 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 we've got it. We've All done right, the so homework. We can, we can take turns and between the three of us, we can get through them pretty quickly. Right. Um, I'm going to begin with the first one. So basically, those are the things people take it in uh, of all of the fun stuff that has happened during the production of Deliver Us Mars. Um, so the first fact is quite amazing. This is something that Kuhn has talked just before, he, that more people worked on Deliver Us Mars than all the devs in the studio that developed it, yeah. thanks to all of our outsourcing partners. Yeah. So I think Guy is the one who can also take a lead on that one and sure. say that we've worked with so many people. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. So uh, as you guys probably already know, like we're very... Uh, small but very talented, uh, I, can, I think I can say talented, a uh, group of people here working at Kirkin. Uh But, you know, we definitely also work with a lot of talented and, and uh, very motivated um, outsource partners and just partners overall. So we, we had, of course, Centroid for our motion capture um, facilities and we had uh, Molinaire where we kind of recorded all the audio and all the VO. Um, and then, we, of course, we have you know, keywords with all the localized languages. So think of VO, uh, you know, German, French and all these separate actors as well. The actors, I mean, that's also a huge bunch of people, right? Um, we have, of course, animators for all the face animation that we did in our pipeline. Um, I mean, it's just so many, so many people involved in the, in the project. And I think if you play the game and then you'll see the credits at the end, I think you'll, you'll see uh, the difference between like our team size and the entire production. Um, and it just comes to show like not everything is, is done here, but it's really a partnership with so many talented, ta talented uh, companies. And um, yeah, it really comes to show like 
it's 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 really big. Uh, a lot of people worked on this. A lot of people touched the game, and uh, that's really cool. I think that's kind of the the moral of the story. Yeah. The in-depth version of 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 the fact, and it's amazing, really. Um, who wants to take the next one? Um, since you asked, I'm a volunteer, you know. Maybe I don't have Go a ahead, chance. Vic. Um, <laughs> so, um, Kun, sorry for this one, but apparently Kun got a child every game mm. that Gokin produced. So, what? That's going to be now a third one on the way, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Congratulations to, to Kun and <laughs> to his lovely wife. <laughs> So we have, uh, uh, usually uh, p- people have production babies, but Kuhn wholeheartedly alone is responsible yes. for all the production babies <laughs> for the entire Kyokin Interactive office. I love, uh, uh, I love Julia, the, e- the emotes of Kuhn and Chad. Yeah, this is his feelings about the kids. <laughs> it's pretty <laughs> yeah, exciting, to be exciting. honest. I think it's exciting. I think Imagine it's really, really, really good. after some time to be able to say, hey guys, I was actually born because of Mars. <laughs> yeah, I think it would be a modern flex someday after a couple of years. Who knows? Yeah, yeah who knows? Funny. For sure. Um, Guy, go ahead and take the next one. Yeah, so uh, we had an office, Tamagotchi, that survived about one and a half week, um, which isn't What very, happened with that one? Not very long. It's a sad story. Yeah, it, it didn't survive very long. Um, I believe like the first couple of days, we definitely gave it you know a lot of attention but then kind of wore off at a certain point and people forgot about it and then yeah it didn't survive uh so that's that's really a story as far it's as pretty I, sad. I don't know but yeah it's pretty sad it's too sad i think people want to take turns taking care of it and then yeah it, no one stuck to the roster right yeah it was just like yeah no it's too just busy with the game <laughs> just sat down on the whiteboard just dead <laughs> Sad. Yeah, very sad. Very <laughs> lifeless. Sad. It's lifeless. Hardware body was just lying on the kitchen table. Yeah. 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 Anyway. <laughs> we missed the funeral, I think. Uh, yeah, I think we even missed the funeral. How bad. It could have been cool if we could have kept it till the release and say, hey, it's still there. We've been taking care of it for months. But yeah, now we've, we've been too busy to do things. Well, yeah, yeah. Rest. Yeah, yeah. Rest in peace, Office Tamagotchi. You will be remembered. Um, um, submit. What for people who are mm. who are watching us? What is a submit when you are uh, doing right. um, when you're developing a game, so that so people get context for what I'm going to read next? Yeah, sure, sure. So a submit is basically a change. Uh, so think of actually any change. It can be very big. It can be very small. It could be a feature. It could be a bug fix. Uh, but a submit is basically um, a change, and we kind of keep track of these changes. So let's say I fix a bug, right? Uh, but by fixing this bug, I actually create three new bugs which sometimes happens, then you can actually choose to revert that submit and then it's gone, right? Then you like undo your change. Uh, but, you know, throughout development, we have so many changes. And I think uh, the fact here is we have had the, um, we passed the 25,000 submit, right? Um, I think it was the November 22nd. So yep. I think right now we're already nearing like the 30,000 or maybe already over it. I'm not sure. But we're like really, really far Um into submits and changes. So that just comes to show how many people, you know, worked on this or tweaked a couple of things or made it a little bit better. And um, yeah, that's what makes yeah. a game, you know, so many changes. <laughs> 30,000, uh, that is crazy to me. Yeah, that's called polishing, P- pretty much, pretty much. All right, I'm gonna take the next one because they're my favorite couple that was just there uh, a while back, uh, uh, Jeremy and Jill. Uh, they're the rapping couple, the, the president. <laughs> Uh, and then Jill out there as well. Um, so we are a close knit um, uh, team, and of course, a lot of funny moments happen. And uh, we even have the nicknames. So Jeremy, that you saw on there, he is uh, nicknamed as uh, a goose, and the reference to that is the goose from the Untitled Goose Game. Now I don't have to explain you watching people that because you've seen the energy. It's right there. It's you. You, you can understand why. And Jill, um, Jill really loves raccoons as animals. You know, we even did a little cameo of that one in her Meet the Team video. Uh, people say that Jill is nice and cute and fluffy until one day she gives you a bite. And then <laughs> that is that is that is the thing. So we do have a couple of nicknames and references going on um, in the office. So if you want to ever see a, a raccoon or a goose emo, you know they're not quite so random yet J- uh, Vic do you want to talk about the next one where is uh, the, the whiteboard yes, the, fam- I, the famous whiteboard yeah I definitely do because you know it kind of links with what you've just said uh, yep. about uh, Jill biting people around so 
we do have our good big whiteboard to keep track of some weird scores. You know, for example, we had um, uh, save days. So uh, p pretty much how many days have passed without a raccoon or Jill biting someone. Usually the count goes to zero because pretty furious. <laughs> Disclaimer, it's not a real, real bite. We're not walking around biting people enough. It's just saying. <laughs> no. Well. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll remain silent. <laughs> no, but uh, so a lot of data goes on that wall. We have, I think, uh, also we keep count of how many times had Jeremy mistaken his lunch place. You know, Julia, she just goes, puts her stuff on the table and Jeremy just goes, nope, on I'm going to sit now. here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's yeah, my, yeah. yeah. Um, I think uh, we also have a couple of random drawings on it. Um, we have, oh, oh, that's a good one. Thanks for the, the homework here. Uh, we have the amount of times our coffee machine, which is named Kitty apparently. I made didn't know that. I, didn't know <laughs> that. I also didn't know, <laughs> by the way. Oh, we, should be, we should be more around the coffee corner. <laughs> you said, I've used yep. Kitty many times and yet I, I just realized her name was Kitty. But anyway. She has a name. Yep. So we, we keep count of uh, how many times uh, Kitty makes uh, shitty latte macchiato. So uh, uh, latte un macchiato, maybe. Have you had one? I've never had one, actually. No, uh, you know, cool fact about it is I always press the same button. It's the basic coffee. And I see same, all of those same. fancy options. Yeah. I've never tried them. I, I mean, I the, think the, there's this is why, there's because like, it just fails at it. Like it says that people have stopped. Like they've counted 47 times and they've just stopped trying to make it. Judith, have you counted this? Maybe you're the only one drinking latte macchiato. Yeah, we, we try to <laughs> make latte macchiato with a latte macchiato <laughs> setting, um, but for some reason, like, because we all use different milk, it's like completely fucked up. Oh. Um, oh. So this is why we're putting putting Kitty on the spot, but I think nowadays no one is drinking latte macchiato anymore <laughs> because of that. Right. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, yeah, just stick to black coffee, guys, then we're good. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Um, can you go ahead and take the next one for us? Yes. So Slack's uh, auto sub for videos detected Keoke Interactive as, um, so auto detection for like the subtitles, right? Uh, detected Keoke Interactive as Cocaine Interactive. Um, you know and the that has uh, happened speech to text so one? So many times. <laughs> yeah, that has happened so many times. And every time we see it, like, here we go. You got, no, you got more cocaine. cocaine. You got more cocaine. It <laughs> keeps on going. So, uh, yeah, we should, we should definitely uh, do something about that. Or at least YouTube or Slack should do something about it. I think it also happens on YouTube. It's just hilarious. <laughs> we, should, we should just, do, I think it happened like even yesterday or something that somebody was just doing, like watching with captions, with closed captions. And every time it was just like cocaine and trust. And we were like, Come, okay then. Yeah, okay. That's just us now, I guess. Maybe we should just so, accept yeah. that faith. Yeah, it never fails, by the way. No. Never. Never, ever. I mean, does, it, does it actually exist, that company? You never know. It might be in the register of companies. So if it's not already claimed, like we might as well just claim it, right? As a sister company and we're good. As a sister company is a third one, the evil yeah. twin. Yeah, we yeah. should do that. We should do that. Yeah. We should do that. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Oh, I love that idea. Um, next one is my absolute favorite. Uh, a fun fact uh, is, uh, you know, how we did uh, voice acting and mm. motion capture acting. So um, there was a mispronounced word. Uh, that uh, our sound designers discovered during listening back to the voice acting. And so they let the actor know. And the fix for that is one of the voice actors re-recorded this mispronounced word on a smartphone while sitting on the toilet. And that made it into the game. Yes, that so, is 100% in, in the game. So um, I think the, the fun thing here is uh, try and find which word that was. Like, good luck. We would I don't think you'll ever know. To the person that we'll never know. <laughs> I don't even. I, I could barely recognize it, to be honest. It's really good. Yep. Uh, so there we go. It's actually going to be a challenge. Try to find which word yep. was re-recorded by the actor while the actor was sitting on the toilet and just re-recorded it with the smartphone. There we go. It's in the. It's a, It's in the. It's in the game now. Is the word poop? People asking. Well, we can't let you. We, we know. Can't it say might or it might not be. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Oh, go ahead and read the next one. The uh, next one is uh, pretty funny, I think. Um, so I have seen um, in, in, in the channels that we use to communicate sometimes, uh, I see those uh, screenshots from Rainer. Usually when the error, uh, like uh, when the, sorry, uh, uh, the engine malfunctions or where something crashes or there's this uh, weird mistake, he tends to send screenshots to the tech department crying in errors or in crashes and then he uses this um, 
Comic Sans, so I, I think he adjusted <laughs> the font of his Unreal Engine to Comic Sans only for the reason to send cool screenshots, only for that specific reason, you know? When uh, I find it hilarious, and I actually thought at, at some point there was somebody um, criticizing this, I think Herben? Was it like, oh, please remove that ugly font from <laughs> <laughs> from my eyes? <laughs> it's yeah, yeah, yeah. It's painful to read sometimes. You see, error crash, and then you just read it in those fancy letters. It's so cool. Yeah, Thanks, I love Rainer. it. I love the font. Thanks, Rainer. Yep. Next one, keys for you. Yes. Um, so, our Deliverers Mars uh, Depot, which is basically like our server space, right, um, is now 1.31 terabytes. And that basically encapsulates the entire history of the game. So I was talking about the changes earlier on. This is just like the game itself, right? So uh, 1.31 terabytes. Uh, so at least you'll know you don't need that much space um, today when the game <laughs> releases, right? It's not that big, guys. It's just on, on our server that is, that is that big. Um, so yeah, 1.31 terabytes. Just so many changes, so many different builds. I think like thousands of builds I think we've done. Do we have, that's an interesting, uh, it would be an interesting number. Do we have somewhere maybe a, what is the, the uh, last? I, I think it really depends on what platform, but I think yeah. um, for like, let's say a PC, I think we're in the thousands, maybe the hundreds. I think, I thought we were like 600 and something, maybe. Oh, I'm not sure, God. <laughs> but it's a lot. Like we have so many builds. I'm going to take on with the next fact uh, is uh, we have uh, Herbin, our uh, concept artist, um, um, our uh, artist uh, department director, uh, who couldn't be here on stream with us uh, because I believe he's currently traveling uh, to the office, but always with us in spirit. So he learned a fun fact at ESA because we do a lot of research for the game. The fun fact goes the difference in temperature between your head and your feet on Mars is 50 degrees. Now, I really wish I knew which is hotter and which one is colder, but I, I bet it's no your idea. feet. What That's colder. <laughs> wow. uh, Vic, go ahead. Take out the next one. I will. I will definitely tell you that I actually, guys, I don't remember this personally, but it's hilarious that Bass, apparently um, there was a day that he was absent and he had to let the colleagues know. And he used chat GP. Yeah, uh, so... Yeah, Chad GPT, sorry guys, Chad GPT to pretty much uh, produce his message and send it automatically, I believe, to, to the team. Uh, I find it hilarious. I have missed that. I have not seen Bass's Chad GPT message, but... It was pretty recent, I think, uh, earlier in the month. Okay, Somewhere in Jan, okay. I believe, but yeah, 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 yeah. That was that was early in the month. Yeah, I would love to see a screenshot or something of this because it sounds hilarious. Yeah, I think we. It I sounds like we, I think we have it somewhere. I think you will be able to find it because it was so 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 funny. Because basically, he just took a screenshot. He basically asked, "Hey, Chad GPT, how do I say in a nice, non-threatening way to my coworkers that I need to take a thirty-minute or one-hour break because I need to get this done?" And it like you know wrote a pretty nice text for him out there to post. Is it long, by the way? Is it a long? Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, it's pretty long. I expect yeah, that from long. chat GPT like it usually gives you. Paragraph. Yeah, it's, it's like a quite a paragraph, actually. Yeah. So. Wow. But it was nice. I wrote a book. I wrote a book. Sophisticated method of Kyokin Interactive to let people know that we're taking breaks. Mm -hmm. Yep. See what production does? It's the future. It's the future. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, at a certain point, they can just produce the entire game. You know, the AI, I mean. That's the goal, right? We can just chill here and just make streams all day long. I Exactly. Think. And just talk about how, how great it is that AI is doing all the work. I no, don't think it can be a good I don't think you can ever cop for the AI though. I don't yeah. think it's gonna like You never know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, you never know. Only one way only one way to find out. Um all right, we have two more facts. Um Guy, go ahead and take the pre final one and I'll take the final one. Oh, um, I, I don't have that. I don't have any more. We don't have more facts. No, that maybe was the last you one do. On our list. Maybe yeah. you oh, do. Oh, never mind. Then I'll give you the two, two more. Um, so the the one that you're missing is that Mars was made in ho homes, offices, libraries, and pubs all oh, across yeah. the world because we do have quite yes. um, a, a couple of team members that work remotely, including myself. Uh, we do have stories when sometimes you don't have uh, electricity or internet at home. Uh, sometimes you want to keep things, you know, like NDA. So people will work on the game from various places, literally all over the world, even also while traveling as well. And then 
then you like visit in family, you tune in and you make sure that you work on the game. So yeah, maybe one day you were sitting next to a, a guy or a girl with a laptop in a pub, sitting in beer, and you didn't even know that it was like Deliver Us Mars in the making on that laptop. And you're like, oh, I wish I knew so, you know, I could say hello or something. So that's great. This is me giving shout out to everyone who have remote with uh, who have remote. I've been doing this for way too long now. Who have worked with us remotely uh, throughout the development of the Diverse Mars. You are legends and it's amazing. And the final one, which is really, really fun fact, is we had a trombone champ with uh, Sander and Buzz. We actually go going to uh, have them here very, very soon. They're coming in right after you. And uh, I was asking them well, what sort of weird sounds have they ever put in uh, Deliver Us Mars. And Sander said, I once recorded a sound of my hungry cats. My hungry cats were making a sound and I decided, wait, I need to use it and record it and put it in game. And he never mentioned what it was. So everyone playing, all of the Ayla sounds, all of the sounds that Ayla makes are basically the recordings of two Sander's cats. They're of course modified, but basically Ayla is, a cat, kind of, <laughs> in a, a way. A hungry, very hungry cat. <laughs> no. <laughs> in a way, so the sound, the sound that Ayla makes is basically two, two, two hungry cats. This is this is Ayla. Remember that when you play the game. There we go. This is Ayla. Uh, when you play the game and when you hear Ayla do the little beep, 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 bloops, that's two Sanders cats. 